The best way to predict the future is to create it. Abraham Lincoln. Change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. Barack Obama. Grab them by the pussy. <laughs> Donald Trump. I stand in front of you here today to talk about the epidemic that is sexual assault and how we can put an end to it. I'm not going to lie, this is not an easy subject to talk about. And actually, a lot of people questioned my choice to speak here today, not because they think that it's not an important subject to talk about, but because they know that speaking openly about sexual assault um, always bears a risk. The risk to make people uncomfortable, the risk to be judged or even attacked, the risk to be associated with this topic forever. Oh look, here comes that sexual assault girl. I'm not telling you this to toot my own horn or because I want to be told how great and brave it is that I'm still doing it, even though, you know, if you want to. To be completely honest, I was one heartbeat away from backing out of this talk and saving the battle for another day, spending the day in bed watching Gilmore Girls instead. But on November 9th, I was giving a reminder of why it is absolutely essential that I give this talk. On November 9th of this year, Donald J. Trump was chosen as the president-elect of the United States. A man who has been caught on tape bragging about grabbing women's genitals without their consent. It's not the intention of this talk to target Trump or his politics. Trump apologized for his comments and told us that he never acted on them, and we have to give him the benefit of the doubt. But what I do want to talk about is the fact that for millions of American voters, bragging about sexually assaulting women was not a deal breaker. And more precisely, I want to talk about the specific reason why it was not. Because I believe that by examining this reason, we can find not only the root of the problem, but also the solution to it. The number one argument used in Donald Trump's defense was that he simply is not the kind of the person who would ever commit a crime as serious as sexual assault. That because he was a successful, smart, well-liked person, he just wouldn't be capable of it. Talk about it? Yes. Joke about it? Apparently. But do it? No way. This defense is based on the belief that because you know someone, because someone might be a well-liked, funny, nice, cool, successful person who has daughters and a wife, it means that they are incapable of sexual assault. This is a dangerous misconception. And the most dangerous part about it is that is a, it is a very common one, and it is not at all limited to supporters of Donald Trump. The belief that to commit sexual assault, it needs intent and viciousness, that it needs brute physical force, and most of all, that it needs a truly evil person, is deeply ingrained in many of us. Because many of us have been taught to imagine sexual assault as one thing, and one thing alone. A dark alley at night, a savage, violent perpetrator, a defenseless, weak victim. This image does not align with reality. I'm not saying that this never happens, it does. But even though it's the first image that pops into our minds when we hear the word sexual assault or rape, a stranger attacking another stranger is proven to be the least likely scenario for this crime. Between 65 and 85 percent 
of victims are assaulted by someone they know, and often trust. Over 60% of sexual assaults take place at the victim's own home or the home of a neighbor, friend, or relative. And 50% of female victims were assaulted by an intimate partner, a boyfriend, a husband, But the stereotype that people who commit sexual assault are soulless ogres lurking in the dark is not only a misrepresentation, it is one of the main reasons why sexual assault is, persists to be the most underreported crime worldwide. And why 90 97% of perpetrators will never spend one single day in jail. 97 Because while it doesn't change anything about the horrendousness of the crime or the impact it has on its survivor, it does change how we as a society perceive and react to sexual assault. Believing that only an openly violent, unstable person could ever commit sexual assault makes us turn our backs on victims when their perpetrator doesn't fit our idea of an assailant. It makes us turn a blind eye when people are bragging and joking about it because we believe that they would never do such a thing, right? But worst of all, it makes us feel powerless against it because we feel like evil people will always exist, right? So just pack your pepper spray and watch your drink and hope for the best. Well, I have good news for you. We are not powerless. Actually, we have the power to end this. We just have to claim it. And the first and most important step of claiming our power is to stop putting all the blames on beasts and demons and shadows that no one can catch, and allowing ourselves to see perpetrators of sexual assault as what they are human beings, not Hollywood movie villains, not soulless, asocial psychopaths, just normal, everyday people. I realize that this is easier said than it is done. First of all, because sexual assault is a horrifying crime and it's hard to acknowledge the humanity of people who commit horrifying crimes. But I don't think that's the main reason. I think the number one reason why we don't like to acknowledge the full humanity of perpetrators of sexual assault is because it means acknowledging the possibility that people we know, people we love, people we might have brought into this world, and yes, even ourselves, are capable of this crime. This is a hard realization to swallow, but Just like with most hard realizations, it's also the key to change. Because acknowledging a perpetrator's full humanity means that there is a necessity to teach our children to not sexually assault, in the same way we're teaching them not to steal, not to lie, not to bully, and not to physically assault, because we don't just expect them to know that this is unacceptable behavior. It also means calling out our friends or acquaintances or coworkers when they do what Donald Trump would call locker room talk and glorify sexual assault as some kind of game, sex as some kind of trophy. Because it means recognizing the fact that their words or someone who hears those words might actually follow through. Acknowledging A perpetrator's full humanity means believing victims of sexual assault even when their assailant does not seem like the type. It also means recognizing that victims are not always weak, that they are not always female, and that they don't always have bruises to show for. Acknowledging A perpetrator's full humanity means accounting them responsibility for their actions instead of just blaming it on their evilness. 
their brutish sex drive or a disease. Just them and all their humanity and the society that has raised them. Acknowledging a perpetrator's humanity also means keeping ourselves in check and always making sure that we have the clear and wholehearted consent of the people we are about to have sex with, that they are in this just as much as we are. Last, but definitely not least, acknowledging a perpetrator's humanity also means owning up to what you did if you sexually assaulted someone. It means acknowledging the hurt you caused, apologizing for it, instead of blaming it on your victim or causing them any further hurt. Because sex is never owed and it's never mandatory. Sex is not a trophy and it's not a reward. And most of all, sex is never your right. Sex is one thing, two people or more, who want to be intimate with each other. The reasons are not important. The genuine wanting is what counts. But then again, it's not that simple, right? Because I do understand that doing all the things I just listed is a lot. It requires a lot of uncomfortable conversations. It requires energy and dialogue and education, self-reflection, and sometimes rubbing people the wrong way. So why the hassle, right? Well, because just like perpetrators of sexual assaults are real human beings with real feelings, so are the victims and survivors of this crime. And there are a lot. Sexual assault and rape are not the rare tragedies that we like to believe they are. They are not things that happen once in a while. One in five female and one in 13 male college students is sexually assaulted. 600 people are raped every day in the United States alone. You can do the math on how many it were since I started talking. And one, more than one in 10 girls worldwide Girls, not women, have experienced forced sexual acts at some point in their lives. It's not something that only happens in certain countries. It's also not something that often ends with the assault. 94% of women who are sexually assaulted experience post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms, and 33% contemplate suicide. The physical and mental repercussions of sexual assault can last years, even lifetimes. And this is why we need to start acknowledging perpetrators and victims of sexual assault as the very real, everyday human beings they are. Because it gives us power. Because it gives us power to save ourselves and everyone around us from becoming one or the other. The best way to predict the future is to create it. Change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. Now, more than ever, is the time to finally claim our power. Thank you.